Hello guys, so welcome back to another vlog and so for today's video, I'm going to talk about the insulation resistance check of our alternator, especially the ones that we are handling on board, which is a diesel generator with 6,600 volts. So come and join me in this new learning. So we have four diesel generator on board and these generators are rated at around 6,600 volts and our diesel generator number four had a situation before wherein it has an overheating issues and so I was asked by the chief engineer to check the insulation resistance of our diesel generator number four from the stator all the way to the rotator and of course since this is a diesel generator and it's a moving machineries and it is rated at around 6600 volts we need to be cautious in everything that we do and for the beginners i need to share these informations to you so that you will have or you can do the this kind of job in a safe possible way so what I did prior to this job is that I did an SJA. So what is an SJA? A safe job analysis. And in the safe job analysis, you will all have the, the scenarios that may lead into an unpleasant situation like an accident. So we need to have those scenarios. Uh, what are the possible situations that it may cause when, while doing this kind of job? And then in that way, we can have a corrective action and what are the equipment how many standby person standby tools proper tools and all the equipment that we need to do while doing this kind of job so that we can avoid having a, a situation or having an accident and after that we need to do a permit to work so that we can inform our supervisor or anyways if they ask us to do the job they know it already but sometimes we still need to inform them about the things that we are gonna doing on to the alternator side and then once you have your SJA and permit to work we need to inform the captain or the bridge that we will be working on one of the generators why why do we need to do this because if the vessel is sailing in a high traffic area and then they might require a high loads or let's say this they will be shifting steering gears or whatsoever at least all the standby generators are ready to be started while once a situation arises so at least before doing a big job into the alternator side or to the generator you need to inform them that they won't be able to use it for this period of time so once all this are set the first thing that you need to do is to have a standby person with you and then we need to isolate the generator both electrically and mechanically okay and the mechanical side so to avoid the generator to be to start automatically we need to put it on local then shut the starting air valve of that particular generator and then we need to isolate it electrically to isolate it we need to rack out the vcb or the air circuit breaker whatever it is on your vessel and just in case you haven't experienced doing racking out of the vacuum circuit breaker i have a separate video on that one and i will link leave the link down below onto the description so once everything is set then we can proceed to the alternator side and start opening the terminal box please take note that there are some generators that you require to remove the AVR or the, or the automatic voltage regulator especially for those 440 volts and then there are some uh, which is written in the manual that 
you also you need to remove the AVR as well as the connections on your PTs and on your CTs, the current transformers or whatever components that needs to be removed. So it is very imperative to check your manual first. But in this vessel, I don't need to remove any of this and I need to I can already go directly into the checking or into connecting our our insulation resistance tester so the first thing I did is to open the terminal box of our generator after that I did the voltage test because there might be a residual voltage onto our windings so it is very important to check and discharge this residual voltage this is of course for our own safety. After ensuring that there is no voltage into the lines, then we started dismantling these terminals. I wanted to completely isolate the windings through our main switchboard. In this way, I am sure that what I am measuring the insulation resistance of our windings, not including the wires going through our main switchboard. It is a good habit to put the markings onto the volts so that once you put them back, you know that they are all aligned together. Use a separate container in putting these volts so that to avoid mixing to other volts onto all the boxes that we are opening. After dismantling the cables, I am now ready to do the insulation resistance check of our stator. So the first thing I did is to check the line-to-line -line continuity test of our windings, of which I am getting around 0 0.2155 ohms on all the faces, which is a good continuity test. After that, I did the line to ground test and set the insulation resistance tester to 5000 volts, which is the only available tester we have on board. The other probe is into the one of the windings. Please take note that do not touch any on the lines once we started the test of this one. We should get an infinity or a giga ohms value on to this windings resistance. So after the test, we are getting around a 4.79 giga ohms value, which is a very good line to ground resistance on to our main stator. Since we are using a high voltage insulation tester at around 5000 volts, after doing this test, we need to discharge the voltage onto the windings by connecting it all the way to the ground and then wait for the voltage to settle at around 0 volts. And if you will not do this and then we will put back the volts and nuts onto the terminals, then you will get an electrical shock. So it is very important to discharge the voltage onto the system before touching anything. After ensuring that there is no more voltage, then I put back the volts and nuts onto the terminals. And then I proceeded to the other checkings, which is to check the diode and the exciter of the alternator. Part of this job also is to check the terminals and the wiring condition of each transformers inside and to check if there is a presence of moisture, dust, or any other foreign materials into our system. I did a main rotator insulation resistance test at around 500 volts and then I am getting around 1 giga ohms 
Unfortunately, I was not able to take a video of it because I was in a hurry to finish the job as we will be arriving into the port soon. So what you are seeing right now is the main rotator winding resistance which is around 0 0.4. 974 ohms which is a good measurement onto the system after that i did the rotating diode test which is i'm getting around 0 0.329 volts dc which is a good measurement onto the diode and then we also need to check the polarity test of our diode which is we only need to interchange the connections of the wiring or the probe test of our multi-tester although I was not able to take a video onto the testing of our exciter I was able to get around 9.1 ohms which is a good value all in all as per checkings all this data or these measurements are in good condition so I sent the report to the chief engineer and told him that there is nothing wrong with the insulation resistance of our alternator. So that's it guys. I hope you learned something from this video and please do not forget to hit the subscribe button for more ETO updates. Thank you.